and we are live. Hello and welcome to The Lion Show. I'm your host, your favorite business coach, Robert Lyon. Today, we have the great pleasure of talking to Andrew, how do you say your last name? Weiss. Yeah. Andrew Weiss. Andrew Weiss is a public speaker and a sales coach. He's done lots of these uh, virtual events and he's broken Guinness Book World Records and he helps businesses grow faster. He's just an awesome guy. Lots of uh, information and just an awesome dude. So why don't you tell everybody kind of who you are and what you're all about? Yeah, so uh, public speaking and sales coach. I uh, also have experience uh, running accountability groups to help people get guaranteed results with goal setting. And recently, within the last year, I helped run a virtual event called PodFest Global. And we broke a Guinness World Record for world's largest virtual podcasting event within a week. And we're looking to uh, double that record here in the next month or so and keep the momentum going. That's so cool, man. So like, what, what, like, what platform did you do? What marketing did you do? Like, how did it all kind of come together? Yeah, so how it all came together is I actually put my own mini virtual event back in May 2020 called Fight the Fluff because uh, one of my top pet peeves about events and speakers are, are people who actually talk but don't actually give any content. And uh, <laughs> and so it was an event themed around that. And then because of that, uh, I got connected with a guy named Chris Kermitsos who started the PodFest community. And he has experience doing over 2000 events within 10 years. And he heard about uh, my event going well. So he decided to bring me on board and we tackled uh, this event together. And we used a platform called Whova, W-H-O-V-A, which is a great virtual platform for running virtual events. And we essentially leveraged his network and community he's built over the years and was able to bring in 5,000 plus people, 330 plus speakers over two weeks and have an incredible, amazing time. That's so cool. So what was the number that you broke or what was, what is the record now? Yeah. So the way Guinness works is that uh, you, they have to think of a number that you have to set with them and they're doing the, doing the number crunching, using their analysts and they say, okay, if you can get 5,000 people to attend within that week. Um, then you break, uh, then you, then you set a new world record. So we had to uh, create the record from scratch. They gave us, they said it had to be 5,000 people. And um, it was funny. And uh, it just shows them how important it is to invite every single friend, family member, cousin, step cousin, ex girlfriend. <laughs> like um, we had actually ended up getting 5,003 people registered. So we barely made the mark. <laughs> really cool to That's go through that awesome. journey. <laughs> and imagine having a webinar with 5,000 people watching. That's so cool. Yeah, it was yeah, it was really fun. We had uh, the way we did it is we have multiple tracks running at the same time. So we'll have like an audience growth track, we'll have like a storytelling track, we'll have a monetization track, and they'll all be going at the same time. So as an attendee, you can kind of see which track you want to check out at which times of the day and have multiple options to choose from. And then as uh, event managers, um, that way, yeah, you don't have a thousand people in a room. You have three hundred people in three separate rooms. And it's slightly easier to manage. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. So. I saw you're a public speaker and a coach. So what kind of got you started down this path or what's your story behind that? Yeah, so I'm, I'm fortunate that you know, growing up, I actually grew up in an entrepreneur household and I didn't realize that that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fact that, you know, my, my father at a young age taught us that it is possible to set your own hours, work when you want to, not have a limit how much money you can make. And I always uh, had that inspiration growing up thinking, geez, that's what I want to do. And when I was in high school, I joined a program called the Young Entrepreneurs Business Week. And it's a program that's especially tailored to teaching high school students business skills. And I love the program, learned how to start my own company within a week, um, a, a hypothetical company. And then I went back and interned for them. And then when I was in college, I did Toastmasters. And when I was doing Toastmasters, I got voted the top public speaker in all of Central and Southern Oregon at 22 years old. And so I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm good at this. I enjoy it. This is fun. And so out of college, I actually ended up getting a job with the Young Entrepreneurs Business Week. And I got paid to travel around Oregon, giving presentations to schools, organizations, companies, teaching professional skills, and gave over a thousand presentations in three years. And uh, when you learn how to engage the audience of a group of high schoolers, just want to text and give you SAS the whole time, you can you learn how to engage a lot of different groups of people. That's for sure. Oh, I'm so jealous, man. My public speaking career has been all imaginary so far. <laughs> well, you're, that you're, sounds you're like the way alone. to do it. It's just the, <laughs> just the number one fear in the world. So I, I don't uh, blame you for that. It's not, it's not your fault, actually. It's an evolutionary deal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just love the idea of just doing public speaking things. Do you remember like on all those thousands of speaking gigs, do you know what the topic was? Oh, yeah, yeah. The topic was teaching professional skills to high school students. And oh, so I teach nice. um, anywhere from like, you know, how to do job interviews, um, how to become better public speakers themselves. Um, we talk about how they can have proper etiquette. 
Um, so really it depended on each setting. And that, that's actually uh, one of the rules about being a public speaker is that it's not about you, it's about the audience you're speaking to and what you, you believe best serves them and best helps them out to get the most value possible. That's awesome, man. Well, that sure takes some confidence to go on a thousand stages and talk to that many people. So what are your tips in the, on confidence? Yeah, so what, one thing I liked I learned recently is that confidence is actually a lagging indicator rather than a leading indicator in the sense that you, know, you can't just cross your fingers and hope you become confident someday. You need to go out and do things and develop your skill sets. And uh, in the, for the scientist community out there, there's a fancy word called, fancy word called neuroplasticity. And essentially, the more you do something, the better you get at it. And um, for those who have experience, you know, driving a car, I don't know about you, Robert, but the first time I drove a car, you know, I got in and I was like totally freaking out. Where's the gas pedal? Where's the brake? Like, I literally thought you had to push both of them at the same time. And uh, luckily, my dad was there to help teach me. He's like, no, no, Andrew, like lightly press the gas. Don't touch the brake. Like, because I'm used to like the go-karts when you have to press both or something. Right. Um, and uh, now after driving a car, now you hear about people who have a drink in one hand, a burger in another hand, and then they're driving a stick shift with their elbow <laughs> as, they, <laughs> as, they, as they drive the car with their knees and turning the steering wheel. So, you know, just, just like driving a car, even though public speaking is the top fear in the world, the more you do it, the more you practice it, the more you learn about it, you know, the better you get. And so... In high school, it definitely helped. I was involved in some high school musicals. I would do Im improv classes and you get more and more comfortable over time speaking in front of people. And then eventually you still have to keep honing the craft and learn how to become a paid speaker and learn how to sell from stage. And that was the most valuable skill I learned from working with the program is learning how to sell from stage because that's where a lot of the money is. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So like when you're getting ready for one of these public speaking gigs, you have like a a pre-written script you want to go off? Do you just have like bullet points? What's your style of attack? Yeah. So whenever you want to put a presentation together, you always want to work backwards in the sense that you want to know what do you want the audience to get out of your presentation? Do you want them to know something? Do you want them to do something? You know, what, what do you want your audience to get out of it? And then from there, you, you really want to drive home one main idea. What is one big theme, one big takeaway they can have from your presentation that'll help them remember it better. And when you're laying out your presentation, you really want to lay out, uh, each person is different. Some people, they absolutely need to memorize everything because they're good at it. They know how to do that. Other people, when I coach people about public speaking, I highly recommend having bullet points because if you use your bullet points, kind of like note cards, when you're giving a, a virtual presentation, for example, it's a lot easier to remember your content and be able to speak, speak genuinely, speak authentically versus trying to memorize everything. You might mess up on it. And so I highly recommend and you're putting a presentation together, having bullet points, because you should be such an expert on the topic that you can expand on each bullet point as much as you need to. And yeah, there's a lot of putting a presentation together with including stories, with making sure you're doing audience engagement, with making sure that you have good body language, that you have a good smile, making eye contact. There's a lot that goes into putting together a great presentation, but as you keep developing that skill set, you will get better over time and people will notice that. That's awesome, man. Do you have any tips for making a really engaging story? Yes. So let's see here. Just for keeping an engaging story is you want to start right where the action is and making sure you, you do that. And so you, let's say you get up on stage. So there's a great book called, I think it's uh, Speak Like Churchill, Stan Like Lincoln. And it's a great book on public speaking. And one of the things that they mention in the book is the importance of the power pause. Uh. And so before you give any kind of presentation whatsoever, you really want to get up there and just be quiet and just let the audience kind of tune in and listen in and, and go, oh, what's he going to say? What's going to happen? <laughs> and one of my favorite stories about the power pause is uh, Mark Twain. He actually went on a speaking tour talking about what it was like to travel um, outside the U.S. And when he came back um, you know, for one of his first presentations, he just got up on stage and just went silent. And he, he didn't move, didn't say anything. And the audience is like, what, what, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, they just started bursting out laughing at, <laughs> at the fact he was silent. <laughs> and, and that's when he knew that he had the energy that he wanted to bring. And he was able to go into his presentation and wow them with the stories and be able to do that. So to answer your question, so before you give the story, make sure you have the power pause. And then once you give the story, you want to start right where the action is and, and talk about um, something that happened in the middle of the story and then talk and then go back and give context. And then you go back to the present and then have the takeaway, essentially. Um, there, there's a lot to storytelling skills, but the, so Chris commits this guy I work with. One of the best ways he likes to describe it is you want to have a James Bond moment where <laughs> at, 
the beginning of every James Bond movie, something action's happening, like it's going down, like 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 you don't go into a James Bond movie and they're sitting in a cafe and just chatting and chilling, like something's gonna happen from the very beginning. So you usually want to start in the heat of the story and be able to expand from there. I got to give you kudos, man, because I, I do a lot of copywriting and a lot of like studying stuff. And whenever I'm trying to figure out how to make like the best story, it always gets boring. So you made it exciting right there, man. You're like, James Bond, make it exciting. Go from there. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Well, I think uh, you got me excited about public speaking. So what really excites you about public speaking and maybe public speaking also like going forward with this whole virus thing? You got to do it virtually. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was I was fortunate enough to start building my virtual business before COVID hit the world, and um, the way I adjusted is yeah, going from regular presentations in person to more virtual presentations. And some people they've been in the virtual presentation industry for a long time, so I'm sure they're they're killing it. But that's how I've adjusted my business is helping people get virtual speaking gigs. And I count that as you know doing a, doing a show like this. I count that as speaking in front of groups, in front of organizations, um, speaking at other Toastmaster opportunities and making sure that you're really putting yourself out there. And so as far as I've adjusted, just really making sure that you recognize right now is actually one of the best times to ever be speaking in the history of the speaking industry, because you used to um, be lucky if you're able to book, you know, 100 and 120 gigs a year, because you have to fly to one place, stay at a hotel, speak the next day, then fly mm -hmm. home and then recover and then maybe get booked out again with the what's going on in today's events, you can give two, three, four, five speaking events per day if you really wanted to and just wow. make it you're, you're taking taking advantage of that and putting yourself out there to make that happen. You got any tips for booking virtual speaking gigs? Yes. Yeah, so one of the first things you want to do is list out where you want to be speaking. You know, who, who do you want to be in front of? Are you a wellness coach who needs to speak to more yogis? Are you a <laughs> doctor who needs to speak to fellow doctors? You know, once you recognize where you want to go, you can start to have a sense of how to actually get there. And then from there, you want to build a relationship and with the people who are in charge and make sure you're offering value um, and being able to do that. And I, def I teach this in my coaching programs too, is how to actually book those gigs, what templates, what scripts to use. Um, but for the most part, it, it does take work to book your own gigs. And I love that you got to have the philosophy. I like that Gary Vaynerchuk mentions where if you never ask, the answer is always no. And so making sure you're putting yourself out there, asking to speak, make sure you're a great speaker, have a highlight reel and put yourself out there. Awesome, man. <clears throat> is that what your coaching pack coaching is mostly focused on? Or do you do like a, a bunch of different stuff? Yeah, so I, I specialize and it really depends on who I'm talking to. I, I believe in the philosophy of helping people to 10x their investments and re reach results 10 times faster. Um, so some people they want to reach faster results by getting speaking gigs, other people they want to reach faster results by doing launches, other people they want to get faster results by working on their mindset. And so it really depends on, on who I'm talking to and what, what their needs are and making sure they recognize, you know, their, their result is there in front of them and I want to help them get them there faster. And in my opinion, public speaking is definitely a great way to do that because yeah, you can have one-on-one -on -one conversations all day long, but sometimes it's easier to talk to hundred, 200, maybe 500 people at a time and make five, 10, 20 sales at once, rather than trying to have one-on-one -on -one conversations and um, being able to grow your business at the normal rate everyone else is essentially. Well, you just blew my mind, man. All right, so million dollar question. How do you 10X your results faster, man? What's the formula or what you got? Well, one thing that people need to recognize is that time moves slower when you do things faster. And an example of that is that once you recognize that, you go, okay, yeah, I guess I do need to accomplish things faster. And that's one of my top cringing moments is when people try and set a goal for themselves, but they don't put a deadline on. And so once you recognize that, that philosophy, um, so that this all came about, um, I follow a guy named Benjamin Hardy. He's um, one of the top writers for medium.com four years in a row. He's a seven figure entrepreneur at just 29 years old. He has a family with, I think six kids now or something like that. And busy. what? Busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very busy. Yeah. And one of the things that he quotes is that Neil Patel would um, had the quote of how do you accomplish your 10 year goals in six months? How do you accomplish your 10 year goals in six months? And Benjamin Hardy took that philosophy. And what he did is uh, he offered a program where essentially if you, he said, Hey, here's my program. It's going to be this amount of money. If you actually do all the steps and accomplish all this, then you get this amount of money back plus the amount that you spent on the program anyway. So it's like a double incentive essentially. And so I took that philosophy and recognized like, wow, that's so true that humans would rather not lose something than gain something. And so some people do need more external accountability than others. 
And like, for me, I don't know about you, Robert, but like, you know, if I miss a day at the gym or if I don't get up on time, you know, sometimes having a slap on the wrist is like, oh, maybe tomorrow isn't good enough for me. Like, I don't want to mess up in the first place. And so what I do for people who want more accountability is I have them put a deposit into a uh, common betting pot along with other people who are doing the accountability challenge. And essentially you have to promise to do a daily action that works towards your goal to get that result. Um, and you have to make sure you're entering in your entry each day. And if you don't take those actions, your money gets forfeited to other people who are taking their actions. And if you do take those actions, you get your money back. Plus you have your accomplished goal. And I love people, that so much, man. Yeah. <laughs> that is like some genius stuff, how to hold people accountable. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. It's had a hundred percent success rate so far. It's helped people lose, I think it was like 20 pounds in 40, 45 days or 15 pounds in 45 days. Another person lost like 30 pounds in a hundred days. I have helped uh, four people reach uh, ten thousand dollars in a month reaching that method so far. Um, it because when you really wake up each day going crap, I do not want to lose you know two hundred dollars or five hundred dollars. Yeah. You're gonna do your actions for the day no matter what. <laughs> yeah, well, just the human like psychology is we would rather <clears throat> get away from fear than go towards you know benefits. We're like if we I don't want to lose that, then they're gonna do it more likely than oh I could work out today. That is awesome. So what do you do for people that? Uh, just don't move fast. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I say you got to do the accountability because, you know, it's it, it's, a, it's a great conversation. I'm in another mastermind um, currently called Iron Sharpens Iron ISA. It was run by a guy named Aaron Walker, who's friends with Dave Ramsey. Um, and in my group, we talked about how, you know, a lot of people, I mean, there's, it's a whole thing that some people know their why behind things. Some people don't know their why. And even people who have a strong why know why they do things, they still don't do the actions to accomplish their why because there's no accountability in place. And so really recognizing, and the thing is that people have different levels of internal accountability and external accountability. Like some people are able to get something done no matter what prize or what uh, consequence you have for them. Other people, that's the only time we get things done is if you have a consequence or if you have a prize. And so going back to, it depends on what each person's, yeah, what each person's personality is and what they can handle, what they can, uh, but how fast they're looking to accomplish something, you really want to make sure that if they want to get something done, that the right factors and environment is in place to make sure that gets accomplished. I love it, man. So I guess when you're taking on these coaching um, clients, do you help them figure out like what their end goal is first? Because I feel like that's that's like the missing ingredient for most people is like, yeah, I want to be rich, but they don't know how to do it. They don't know what they really want. They don't even know what rich actually means. So how do you help people like figure that out? Yeah. So what I do is I, the way I operate is I, I meet people. I see if, um, how much value I can provide, provide them whenever I meet them. I see if there's an opportunity to help them. And then I do a consultation call with them. And in that consultation call, that's when I really do a super deep dive strategy onto their, their business and their life and talking about what is holding them back. What do they really want? Why do they want those things? And just help them get absolute clarity on going, oh yeah, I guess I never thought about it that way. That would be super helpful to recognize or oh yeah, that is a good path I should be taking right now. And so really helping people get that clarity, like you said, is, is super crucial because if you don't know what you want, guess what you're going to get? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not what you want. And so helping people recognize what they want and why they want it, I, I personally believe is definitely one of the most important things someone can do to make sure they achieve what they want in life. Yeah. So you help them figure out what they want and then you put like a, a daily habit that they have to do. Otherwise they lose their money <laughs> or something like that. Or just that's the incentive, right? Is that kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Each, each person, some people need the accountability. Some people don't. They're just like, just tell me what to do and I'll go do it. I don't need accountability kind of thing. Um, but yeah, basically right, right now I'm doing an unlimited coaching model. And so when people work with me, they get unlimited access to me where they can book um, calls with me during the week. Um, they, I also, they also can message me throughout the week as well. And basically kind of giving them the forest from the trees and also helping them balance them, balance things. And, um, cause the, the issue is we have, the, it's the four models of, of thinking. I'm not sure if, you, so I know this is a fire hose of information today, but, uh, <laughs> for those like listening in, it's things we know we're good at things we don't know we're good at. And also things what we know we're bad at and things we don't know we're bad at. And so if you're not working with a coach, if you're not working with someone who can recognize for you what you're good at, and what you're bad at, that you don't, that are in your blind spots, then that really has a huge difference in you being able to move and move faster and accomplish things faster. And that's why I love giving this unlimited coaching model is because I'm constantly, you know, helping them, you know, on, by their side, you know, helping to oversee, you know, things from an outside perspective, let them know, hey, like, here's your opportunity, here's your clarity, here's what your next steps look like. 
and here's your encouragement. Here's your motivation for the day. And it really helped. It really is a great feeling for my clients knowing, oh my gosh, like I, I got this. Like I, I can take on the day because, you know, I have someone else by my side who's willing to help me. But at the same time, you know, of course you can't rely on coaches like me to become successful and become accomplished. Like you want to use coaches as like a booster as like, um, yeah, booster rapid achiever, because uh, the way I envisioned it is like, you know, I used to do um, Spartan event races where you have to like run over obstacles and jump over walls and stuff. Like whenever you have a goal for yourself and a result for yourself that you want to achieve, you know, there's, a, there's a wall there that you get over to, to accomplish. And if you say, Hey, um, you know, throw me over this wall, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't benefit you because <laughs> you never learned how to, how to get over walls. But if you have someone who's giving you that little boost and like making sure you have like their tools, resources, to get over that wall. But if you know at the back of the mind, you're getting over that wall, no matter what, that's, what's most important because no one should believe in you more than you believe in yourself. And it also recognize you want to have every tool, every resource at your disposal. And that's what a coach is there to do to help make sure you still get over that wall regardless. Oh man, you got me fired up now. I'm going to <laughs> do some Spartan stuff. So yeah. you said something really awesome. And I just, I love it. So you help all, people also figure out what they're not good at so that they can move faster. That's, that's like kind of revolutionary in my mind for some reason, but mind talking a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I believe, uh, so forget who, who brought this up. I think it's, it's Dean Graciosi. Um, he's also one of the, he's a top influencer in the space. And he mentions a lot how, you know, it's unfortunate that people in school were taught how to, oh, fix your weaknesses, fix your weaknesses. When, why can't you just focus on your strengths and then recognize what you're good at and then use that leverage and power. And so as far as you bringing up, um, helping people realize what they're not good at, it, it kind of goes back to, you know, the, the, the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled is making the world believe he didn't ex exist. Whereas if you don't know what you're not good at, you don't know what's holding you back. And uh, once you can recognize what you're not good at, you could say, okay, now I know this is my weak spot. How can I leverage that? Or how can I approach that from a new perspective to make sure I am using my strengths more? I, I am using my superpowers and getting where I want to go much faster. That's so cool. man. And then uh, in a world of so many opportunities and uh, just multiple things that we all want to do, um, what is your, your take on like focus? Should they only do one thing at a time or is there room in life to do multiple things or what do you think? I think that the man who chases two rabbits catches none or man or woman. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, be, being an entrepreneur, I definitely have shiny object syndrome and one book that I definitely rec recommend for people that was recommended to me by my mentor is called the one thing. Um, I think his name is John Keller. I want to say he's the guy who started Keller Williams. And that's one of the things he talks about is that, but, you know, he, he tells a story right off the bat that uh, Andrew Carnegie, you know, one of the richest people in the history of the world, it was only focused on one thing at a time. It was make a bunch of money and then give it all away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so every day he was just focused on how can I make more money? How can I make more money? How can I grow my wealth? And once you start to master a skill and, and focus on the one thing, then you can continue to, to focus on other skills and other developments. So always the, the more focus, the more precision you have, the better. And it's just like when you have multiple tabs open on a computer, like are you going to be more productive with 10 tabs open or more productive with one tab open? And I'm willing to bet you'll be more productive with one tab open. Yeah, totally. I don't know. I was talking to somebody and she said that there's, you could do everything. And I was like, I don't think I can do everything. I feel like I'll, I'll spread myself too thin and I, I need to just pick the one that means the most to me in a way, or the ones that actually going to get me to that success that I, I created, you know, I think that's just really key. Yeah. So well, I would say you can do anything, but you can't do everything. That's uh that's how yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That was really good, man. So you got any uh, virtual summits coming up or what are you up to these days? Yeah. So we actually have a currently, uh, we're going for another Guinness world record. Uh, we're calling it uh, PodFest global again. And we're going to hosting that the pre week we is going to be called VidFest. So it's everything focused around video branding, live streaming, um, YouTube, it's anything around video, essentially. That's uh, that, that pre week is happening February <clears throat> 22nd to the 26th. Nice. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we have a uh, pod fest, which is March 1st to the 5th, where we're going for another Guinness World Record to uh, hopefully re um, get more than 10,000 people to attend this event. And uh, we're looking to bring in you know, more than 350, maybe even 400 speakers at this awesome event. And uh, if you want to check us out, definitely go to Eventbrite, type in PodFest Global or, or join our PodFest community on Facebook or on or on uh, Instagram. And yeah, we're, we're super excited for this upcoming event. And then we know it's going to be a big hit. That's so cool, man. 
you just need like a, a blog fest and then you got all three you got video audio and written word you know? <laughs> yeah yeah we, we do have some content strategies um throughout the event so what we're super excited for is um we actually we're gonna have a, a little mini broadway con um so we have we're we partnered with a broadway organization and they're gonna have the reunion of the hamilton cast come together and put on a show for us um so we're super excited about Jealous. that yes yes yeah. so that'll, that'll be super fun so while you're working hard and learning during the day you know learning from some of the top speakers and content creators in the world you know at night we're going to have a big grand showing of of this amazing broadway group who's going to come on and sing for us and put on a show and make sure we're having fun during the event too that's so cool um what was what was the video one it's about video branding and just building like a video presence are you are you big on that yeah, yeah, we're calling that VidFest, and yeah, essentially, uh, Chris, the guy who founded it, you know, whenever he went to VidCon, he felt that whenever he went to, uh, you know, all these other video branding events that people only knew you based on how many subscribers and followers you had, and they didn't appreciate you for the actual content you're able to produce, and so he, he has created this community of people that like, hey, we don't care how many subscribers or followers you have, we want to make sure that you know the knowledge you need to get to where you want to go, and we're going to treat you as how you deserve to be treated along the way as well um and, and treat you with respect and like and honor your your artistic passion and honor your 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 creations essentially and so yeah we've hosted uh yeah we, for video fest we teach people how to monetize their youtube how to grow more subscribers how to monetize live streaming how to get bigger social media audiences um yeah basically for people who are like to leverage youtube for their brand or any kind of video branding we bring in some of the top experts and content creators in the world to give examples of like hey here's where i used to be here's what i did here's where i am now here are new innovative strategies not many people know about but if you capitalize on this now you'll you'll achieve and accomplish this and just really making sure people get the resources they need to be successful in the video branding space yeah i love that i think video is the way listeners whenever uh, we make an episode on youtube everybody freaks out so i think everybody will be very interested in that that's so cool yeah <laughs> and how did you get uh, introduced to these guys or is this like your your company or is everybody just coming together yeah this was when uh yeah after, after i did my virtual event in may i got introduced to him after the fight the fluff event and yeah i've been working with them since august of 2020 um so we're coming up uh on six is that six months yet i think it's almost, almost six months uh, oh, actually, we actually did get started in June 2020, so that is almost seven months now. Um, and yeah, we with, we uh, we're super excited too. We're going for a live event in June 2021, uh, and so we're excited to be able to do that and uh, make sure. I mean, my, my there, camera's, there we go. But yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get a live event in June 2021. I think it's uh, the Hilton um, in Orlando, Florida. So we're super excited for that. Well, that's so cool, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show today, man. It was just absolute pleasure. Pleasure. You got tons of gold nuggets. Um, is there anything else you want to tell the listeners before we hit off? Yeah, I'd say the in the top piece of advice I like to tell people is that whenever you want to do something, find someone who's already doing it and study what they do and study what worked for them. And and also make sure that your environment shapes your success. Because if you surround yourself with people who say, oh, you can't do this, or oh, you should do something else, like, oh, um, why even try? Like every, every little, what, what's the word? Every little backlash adds up very quickly. And so if you, wherever you wanna go, make sure you're finding someone who's already done it, has already achieved it, and they know exactly how to get there and how to help you along the way. And so, yeah, I encourage anyone who's listening in that whenever you wanna achieve something, making sure you follow someone who has achieved it while making sure that you do it in a way that aligns with you and recognize that the solution is always already always there. And as I like to say, get the people going, make it happen. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Um, do you have any tips just on like helping people get into that winning mindset or into that positive mindset? Like you seem like you have a great take on that. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually recently posted a quote by uh, Teddy Roosevelt um, and uh, he talks about the man in the arena. Um, and how, if you are in the trenches, you're putting in the work, you're, you're, you're get you're failing, you're, you're, um, you 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 feel like you're not moving at a fast enough pace, recognize that at least you're doing anything because it's just so easy for people to sit back and laugh or, or criticize and make comments on it. But if you're the one who's actually putting in the work, uh, as Ben Hardy is saying too, at least you're doing what you want to do. And so recognizing that. And I love, I love a great quote about mindset. It's a guy who, um, I forget his name, but he's, he's like a, one of the top tennis players in the world at one point. He only had one, one arm during all this. And uh, 
he said, I don't know if a positive mindset works, but a negative mindset does. And <laughs> the way I interpret that is, you know, if you have a negative mindset, of course, it's going to bring you down. Of course, it's going to make you sad and angry and depressed and, and, and hold you back versus having a positive mindset. Like, you know, it, it's, he's, in my opinion, he's making fun of all the cynics like, oh, what's the point of having a positive mindset? But at least you know that it's having a positive mindset is not going to bring you down, make you depressed and sad and negative all the time. And, and for me, you know, I, I believe that life is short. We're, we're lucky to be here. I think what Gary Vaynerchuk says, you have like a one in trillion chance of us being here. And so, I'm, you know, it's, you only live once. And uh, that's why I definitely believe in having a positive mindset is just being grateful and happy to be here and living life to the fullest. Yeah, I totally agree, man. Um, why don't you tell everybody like the best places to get in contact with you and the best places to find you? Yeah, so I'm on the four main social medias of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I'm located at the Andrew J. Weiss, the Andrew J. Weiss. Uh, you can also contact me through my website, weisswisdom.com. And yeah, I'm always always happy to connect. I have a, if you want to reach out, I have a checklist of everything you need to put together a virtual event. Um, I also have a checklist of what are the top things to become a confident communicator. So I'm happy to send you over those checklists for free if you want to reach out. And yeah, always looking to connect with people and provide value however I can. Yeah, man, that's awesome. One more thing, I saw you had a, a book that you wrote. <laughs> was yes. It? Who can play at this game or something like that? What was yeah, it? yeah, um, yeah. I think it was about three or four years ago. Um, I was really into puns, and yeah. um, I have very competitive friends. And one of my friends texted me <laughs> one day and goes. Hey Andrew, want to exchange bird puns? Two can play at this game. <laughs> <laughs> me, me thinking I was clever, saying, "Whoa, don't go robbing me of all my puns." <laughs> and, I'm dead. Uh, That's awesome. Seeing uh, bird puns back and forth, so we reached a hundred, and I'm like, "Well, I guess it's time to make a book out of this." And uh, what's unique about my book is that some pun books it's only words, some pun books it's only pictures with the words. I did a whole storyline of pictures and of animated uh, pictures with the words and that's how it's unique and it's all bird themed and uh, it's, it's a very fun read. Two can play at this game. You can find it on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that, man. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of having fun. Yes. That's for Heck sure. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much, man. You definitely dropped some wisdom in this episode. I'm sure everybody listening just got a ton out of it and I really appreciate you coming on. So of course, happy to be here. Thanks for hosting me. No problem. Thank you. And thank you everybody listening. Take care.